Right, so I'm going to draw a house. It's going to be the world's most basic house. It's going to look like a house down Chapel Dundred. <laughs> right. At the back of my house, I've got a hole, a Dane hole, which is what we had just not lot far from me, where someone lost a front garden and half of the road on Blackshot, if anyone lives around Blackshot. Okay, you might have seen that for half a year, the hole that is there where everyone's arguing. I want to fill that hole up. Okay, so I have got a big pile of mud in my front garden. And I want to transfer that to fill that hole up. So I want to even out the front and back garden. So I haven't got a mountain in front of my house and I haven't got a cave at the back. All right, now, one way I could do that is I could get a spade <laughs> on the end of my arms, apparently. <laughs> I could get a spade and I could get a shovel full. I've turned it into a shovel now. It was a spade, now it's a shovel. They're different things. Does anyone care that the shovel and the spade are different? Right, so I could get a spade full of mud. And then what I could do is I could walk and tip it in there. Yeah, and then I could walk back and get another shovel of mud. This is what, when I was saying about the printer, having to send one back at a time, this is how we used to do device communication. Okay, so we would be tied up doing nothing but taking one blob of the mud at a time. It would take ages to do that. So what we do is we say, well, no, 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 we're not going to do it like that. We're going to use a buffer. Can anyone guess what the buffer might look like in this physical example? A giant bucket. I'm going to use a wheelbarrow because they're more practical, because it's got a wheel on it. Okay, so I'm going to have a wheelbarrow. It's going to be a big wheelbarrow. Got to have a handle that comes down so I can hold it. Right, what I'm going to do this time, instead of transferring one spade's worth at a time, I'm going to fill up the wheelbarrow. So eventually, I'm going to, have a few. I'm going to pile it up a bit because I'm risky. Okay, so I've got it piled up. I might drop a bit off the side. When I fill that up, I take the whole lot and dump it in the hole. Okay, and then I walk back with the buffer. Now, there could be an opportunity to give two people a job. So I could have the person who fills it up, and I could have another person who's Australian, <laughs> who's going to move the wheelbarrow. Now, while the wheelbarrow is being taken to the back garden to be tipped in, what is the person with the spade doing? Yeah. Nothing. They're stood there. They can't feel the wheelbarrow because it's gone. It's been used. Okay, so this is what I was saying about the buffer. So the wheelbarrow is the buffer. I can fill the buffer or I can be emptying the buffer, but I can't be doing both. Unless I'm going to chase after the boat with the wheelbarrow and try and put a few more spades full on. Which I'm not going to do. Okay, because that would be stupid. This example is already stupid as it is. Right, what I can do to speed this up is to create two buffers. So I'm not just going to go for one wheelbarrow, I'm going to go crazy and have two wheelbarrows. A skip. I can't move a skip. Right, so I've got two wheelbarrows. So I'm going to draw the other geezer over here. So he's got another wheelbarrow. Uh, it's fallen in the old bit, he went a bit too fast. So he's tipping. Now, the way a double buffer would work, to start with, they're both empty, the wheelbarrows. They're both over here. Okay, I can fill one up. As soon as I've filled one wheelbarrow, I can tell the person who's doing the emptying, take that wheelbarrow, stick it in the hole. But while they're gone, dealing with the first wheelbarrow, I can start filling the second wheelbarrow. Alright? When that person comes back, if we get the timing right, when that person comes back, they can immediately get the other wheelbarrow that's full and bring me the empty one, I can fill the empty one. So we can actually speed up the removal of the mud from the front garden to the back garden. Because we've always got a buffer that we're filling while the other one's being emptied. Okay? And that's called a double buffer.
It's what we use when we're doing 3D graphics. You see on screen graphics for a scene, but in the background, the game code is filling another or drawing another scene. As soon as it's been finished drawing, we switch which scene we're showing. So we show the completed one. While that's being shown in the background, we're creating the next scene. Then we switch, then we switch, and we just keep doing that. So we've got two buffers. There are extensions to this. You might have seen on game settings that you can use triple buffers, which just gives you three. So you can be filling up and getting them ready to display. So you can make it smoother, okay, the display of the graphics. But a single buffer can only be read or written. Filled or unfilled? Yes, Kieran. What happens to the buffers when you've got pre rendered stuff in games? What do you mean? Um, like where it draws the file from resources rather than actually. Exactly in the same process, but you're pulling the data, you're not live calculating all the geometry mm -hmm. like you would do if you're like, moving around a scene, but you're still having to process data that's coming from a disk. Mm -hmm. So you might have to be decompressing video. So again, that is buffered. You do not see the video being created on screen. It's created in the background, and as soon as one frame is finished, we switch. And then we can start generating the next frame. Okay? It's a lot of work, though. Yeah. You, what you're trying to do is you're trying to maximize the use of your resources. So with this wheelbarrow thing, both people who are working to move this mud are constantly working. That is the ideal. Okay? That you maximize. Your most efficient use of your, all your resources is if they're working full time. If there's a lot of idling going on, then they're not working, there's no point in having, you know, there's no point in having two people if they don't need all this spare time. If there's loads of like standing around doing nothing, what are we using them for? Okay, and it's the same with the computer resources. Why, you know, don't go out and spend 1,000 pounds on the most expensive graphics card in the world if when you're playing a game with full detail, half the time it's doing nothing. Because it's so quick, it doesn't need to do it. You, you've wasted your money. Okay, and the double buffering is a way of maximising the two devices. Okay? As much as possible. But because we, a buffer only allows us to fill or empty. So actually, in reality, when we do DVD burning, we use two buffers. Okay, so... For the DVD burner, the process starts, so you've got buffer one, buffer two, okay? So we fill the first buffer. As soon as that's filled, we contact the DVD burner, and the DVD burner starts reading the buffer, so burn, okay? As soon as we fill that one, we can start filling the second buffer. Okay, and we're filling it quicker than it's been emptied. That's the ideal situation. As soon as the burner gets to the end of this buffer, it'll just switch to this one that's ready. It'll signal to the, say it's finished with this one, we can fill that one up again. Okay, and that cycle goes on so that the slower device is kept busy. You need the slow device to be constantly working. The fast one, it can go off and do all the jobs. Okay, so the CPU is generally what we're talking about. That is the fastest device in the computer. Okay. Keep it busy with data. Makes it more efficient. Same as a printer. Printers are bad when they have to keep stopping and starting because they have to keep warming up, especially laser printers. Okay, so that colour printer, if we like, we had a lot of printing to do, if we did it all in one batch, that would be more efficient use of that printer than like saying, right, I'll print a document every 10 minutes. Because actually, it has to go through a process of calibration and warming up every time we print, unless it's constantly going. Okay. So buffers are there to allow us to work with devices of different speeds, so we're not tying any device up. The slow one is the problem. We want to maximize the throughput on a slow device. So that the CPU can get on with what it needs to do, which is running all the applications. Okay. Right, what we're gonna do